Now the axon um, is is the focal point here of everything really. Um, it is what is, and like I mentioned earlier, it's what actually takes the signal away from the body or away from the cell body. And there are components to pay attention to in terms of understanding. Um, these sausage-like um, fixtures right here, um, and I let me uh, let me go to a little different color um, pen so you can see it. But this right here, these structures are what we refer to as the myelin sheath. And th that myelin sheath is a lot like um, uh, insulation um, on a um, piece of, of wire, copy, copper wire, other wire. And it essentially um, uh, accentuates the signal and makes it speed along the axon uh, even faster. One of the reasons that we know that is uh, a, a classic example would be um, MS, multiple sclerosis. MS is a disease that has the um, a deterioration of the myelin sheath. And as that happens, you see a deterioration in coordination uh, and uh, the slowing of response of myelin. And we discover a lot about myelin by what happens uh, bad to it, if you will. So the the uh, actual signal itself uh, f runs down the sheath, and we're going to look at just the process and how that does it. But the myelin sheath is one of the key components of uh, an axon in terms of the electrical signal running down the length of the axon. Axons can be very, very long, um, and they, um, depending on the nature of the fiber, um, they can go at two miles an hour or up to 180 miles an hour. It's just remarkable the speed at which they operate. Um, it makes uh, most computers look pale. Uh, they look like a snail compared to our nervous system and axons and how they actually uh, actually operate. Um, so the the uh, and, and we'll have some demonstrations in class so I can show you a little bit about how this actually operates. So axon is the key component um, and it takes things away from the signal away from the cell body itself. All right so the next component um, we've already talked about axon I probably should go back to my previous color here since trying to maintain some consistency. The, the next one is dendrites and dendrites are the other end. Like I said, dendrites are the ones that listen. So axons pass, they speak and dendrites listen. And you have uh, these uh, terminal ends of the axon here that I, which I didn't really get a chance to show you. And they're the ones, this, these pieces here are what connect up with the, um, with the dendrites uh, themselves. But the, the signal runs along, uh, we already mentioned the myelin sheath and how that operates, but axons speak and dendrites listen. I'll say that over and over again because it'll make it easier for you to understand. Uh, these terminal branches of, of the axon um, are, are part of what at the end of these between the terminal branches is something that we refer to as a synaptic uh, cleft. Uh, and essentially the dendrite and the axon are not, don't touch each other. There's a small gap and uh, we otherwise would just simply refer to that as, uh, oops, yeah, I guess I should should uh, try to um, uh, let me go back to my pen here uh, we just simply refer to it as a synapse and that's the gap between those now let me um, uh, unpack for you for a minute just exactly how this uh, how the signal actually uh, transpires how does it run along the uh, the actual axon itself and it's something that we refer to as an action potential 
and um, that's uh, what I want to explain to you in this um, next illustration. All right, this is one of the, the, the components which we'll, we'll kind of demonstrate in class so that you can understand it, but the, the key component to keep in mind here when we're talking about uh, the actual action potential, and action potential simply means uh, that the signal itself uh, runs along um, that runs along the axon, but it 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 is not like an electrical signal. It, it it's not like you would expect running through an electrical wire. Actually, it's electrochemical in nature, and the key uh, electrochemical. The key here and the key term is something that we refer to as depolarization. And it happens uh, at a very quick speed. And essentially, what you have up in this top part here is that the stimulation actually occurs. I mean, the, at, this, at this point of the, the occurrence, uh, the stimulation occurs. And when that happens, then um, essentially the electrical charge on the interior, that's what all these negatives are, is usually on the interior and positives are out here. And as soon as the, the electrical signal or the stimulation occurs, these uh, um, uh, plus positively charged ions rush in and essentially what that means is that this surface of the 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 axon um, uh, allows entry and so when we're when we're looking at uh, depolarization it's going from a a little bit like a locked facility uh, that is locked in place nothing is going to come in or out and the moment that a stimulation occurs it um, sweepingly becomes unlocked and uh, the uh, uh, positive ions go rushing into uh, the signal uh, into the interior of the axon down here and then um, it creates this massive kind of stimulation that occurs and then uh, the signal moves farther down the axon and and what then happens is that it it, it goes from uh, depolarizing to what we refer to as um, a, a resting state, and that resting state means that essentially it returns to its returns to its steady state or its balanced state. It returns to balanced state, and that's really the key because the minute that occurs that part of the axon is back to normal and we might refer to that as a um, resting potential uh, but one of the keys to keep in mind is that uh, this this action here because the depolarization positives go in negatives come back out uh, in a sense a, a pump in the cell moves it from one place to the other and then we go back to uh, this uh, depolarization from depolarization then to the action potential which continues to sweep down the um, um, axon itself and then it goes back to resting again and when that happens then it's basically r ready to accept another um, action or another action potential so this uh, needless to say it is extremely quick uh, the thing to keep in mind here is that uh, all all responses is uh, all or nothing. It's a little bit like firing a gun. You you don't just partially fire a gun. Either it goes off or it doesn't. And that's exactly what happens. So um, the, the more neurons in a particular area here that are uh, affected and triggered in... in um, uh, by the stimulation that occurs, the stronger the signal becomes, and um, the the uh, and so it's not that one neuron is triggered 
and hard and it, and it's more excited than the rest it's how many of these are actually um, stimulated that make for this profound signal that you might see um, a good example would be the the uh, your knee jerk reflex it, it the doctor hits it in just the right place and it can move your whole entire lower leg and that's all of those neurons those motor neurons that are triggered when he taps on uh, your knee the the way they typically do.